Hello, Calc Kids. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. This is Mr. Bean. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about what's called converging, whether it's converging absolutely or conditionally. Now, before I start off, I do have to apologize. I've just got over a brutal case of COVID. And uh, so if I start coughing or something, I'm going to have to edit out the coughing. So, uh, but if my voice sounds a little funky here, that's why. So my apologies. I'll, I'm going to do the best I can on this. So today's lesson, we're going to still talk about convergence, but we're doing something, uh, kind of adding a little nuance to it and trying to figure out if something converges, does it converge absolutely or does it converge conditionally? So that's what we're talking about today. So there's three possibilities. Something could converge absolutely, it could converge conditionally, or it just diverges and we don't have to worry about absolute or conditional. So what we're going to look at is when you have a series, you take its absolute value. If the absolute value of the series converges, then we say that it converges absolutely. What happens is it converges and the original without the absolute value, it also converges. So I'm going to go through and give you an example of each of these three things. And then if it uh, if it converges conditionally, the way that happens is that the absolute value of the series diverges, but the original one converges. And then, of course, if both of these diverge, then it's just diverging. So I'll refer back to these three as we go through these examples. Let's let's start off with this first one. So what we do is we look first at the absolute value. So I'm going to put little absolute value symbols here and then say, what does that thing equal? So my new series is going to be n equals 1 to infinity. So if you have an alternating series like this, where it's going from negative, positive, negative, positive, basically the absolute value just gets rid of that. So now it's just 3 to the n over n factorial. So what we're trying to figure out is what does this thing do? Does it converge or diverge? the absolute value of this series. So the rough thing about this lesson is you have to take everything you've been learning in unit 10 and apply it into this lesson. So if, you've, if you're doing well with unit 10, this actually, this lesson is pretty quick and easy. If you're struggling with it, well, this is a good review. Think of this as an opportunity to be reviewing all the different tests we've been doing. Uh, so you'll want to have your notes out for all of unit 10 to be able to effectively do this and remind yourself. So how do we handle this one here? What I would do is what we did in our last lesson, which is the ratio test. So I'm going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of this thing with an n plus 1 plugged in. So let's say 3 raised to the n plus 1 all over n plus 1 factorial. And then I multiply it by the reciprocal of this one. So n factorial on top. 3 to the n. So then what does this equal? So this is something we've done in our last lesson quite a bit. So I'll show all the steps on this one so I don't lose you. If you don't know what I'm doing, then you may need to go back and take a look at, uh, at the last lesson where we talked about how to do the ratio test. And then this one is n plus 1 times n factorial. And then this is still times 3 to the n. All right, so now I've got some things that are going to cancel here. 3 to the n's, n factorials. All right, so now I'm left with the limit as n approaches infinity of 3 over n plus 1. Now that is going to equal 0. That limit is going to equal 0. And that is less than 1. Therefore, using the ratio test, we can see that the absolute value converges. And if the absolute value converges, we are done. And we can just say that it converges absolutely. Or you can say absolute convergence, however you want to write it. So I'm going to write converges absolutely. There's no need to check the original series because once the absolute value, once that thing converges, you're completely finished and you just say that it converges absolutely. We know the original series will also converge because of this. All right, so let's do an example where the absolute value doesn't converge. Uh, all right, so check this one here. So let's take again, what we're going to do is first check the absolute value. So I like to think of this and then rewrite it as a new series. So n equals 1 to infinity. And then if it's an absolute value, it's just going to knock out this, uh, this negative alternating part here. So it's going to be a positive 1 raised to the n plus 1. Well, 1 raised to n plus 1, 1 raised to anything, is just going to be a 1. So I can rewrite that as 1. And then the cube root of n is the same thing as n raised to the 1 third. Hopefully you can tell that's an exponent. So n raised to the 1 third. So this here is a p-series. So that goes back to earlier in unit 10. <coughs> Uh, what was I saying? Okay, so this is a P series and P is uh, less than one. So this thing is diverging. 
So the P had to be greater than one in order for it to converge. Remember that? So it diverges. So now what that means is the absolute value diverges. That doesn't mean that the whole thing diverges. So if you go back here, so we're either on step two or step three that the absolute value diverged. So now what we're going to check and see is, does the original series converge or diverge? And then that'll tell us which of these two things we're dealing with here. So let's look at just this original series here. Well, this is an alternating series. So that's what I'm going to focus in on. I'm going to use an alternating series test. So I have two conditions I have to meet. The first is the limit as n approaches infinity of a of n needs to equal uh, zero. Well, in this case, what's our, uh, what's our a of n? Our a of n is this, this one over n to the one third. So we're going to say the limit n approaches infinity of one over n raised to the one third. And yes, that does equal zero. So our first condition is met for the alternating series test. So the next condition is whether or not uh, a of n, we need a of n to be decreasing. So does, is a of n decreasing? Well, a of n is one over n raised to the one third again. Uh, again, we don't worry about the alternating part. So that's gonna be one over cube root of one. The next term would be one over the cube root of two. The next term is one over the cube root of three. And it becomes pretty obvious very quickly that the denominator is growing and therefore the whole fraction is getting smaller and smaller. So yes, it is decreasing. So what we can say here is then that this is converging the original series is converging, the absolute is diverging, and so that leaves us with that it converges conditionally. Or if you wanted to say that it is a conditional convergence, that it has conditional convergence, you can say that too. It just depends. Your teacher or different textbooks will say different things, but it's, it means the same thing. Conditional convergence or converges conditionally. All right, so that was our second example. So the next one we're going to do is where they both are going to diverge. So even though we already know that they both diverge, we're still going to do the practice of setting up the absolute value first, just because it's if you do see that the absolute value converges, you're done and you don't have to do anything else. So it's good practice to start off with that. So what does that thing equal? That's going to be going from one to infinity of the conditional part, excuse me, the alternating part is just gone. And that's just going to be n over n plus two. So this is something that we did right at the beginning of unit 10. You can check this one by using what's called the nth term test for divergence. So all we're doing here is we're just going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of uh, n over n plus two, and then show that since that equals one, and it doesn't equal zero, then we know it diverges. Okay, that's all we're doing for this one. So since it doesn't equal zero, we know for sure that it diverges. That's the nth term test for divergence. All right, so now the, the original series right here, right, without the, the brackets, without the absolute value, it's very similar to this nth term test of uh, divergence. I'm just going to look at the limit as n approaches infinity. What's happening as you go off to infinity here? of this whole thing. Well, it's just going to be, uh, this part is it's one, and then this is going to alternate between negative one and positive one being multiplied by to the one. So we're going to have negative one, and then it's going to be one, and then a negative one, and then a one. So this limit actually does not exist. And so the limit not existing means that this also diverges. And so both of them diverge. The whole thing is just diverging. There's no conditional or absolute convergence, anything like that. It's just real simple. The thing that diverges and you're done now. All right, so that's the gist of the whole lesson here. We've covered pretty much everything, but I want to show you two more examples because these are the types of things that you might see on an AP exam, and it does get a little tricky. So I've got some of this in the practice for you as well as master checks and tests. So it's good practice to understand how we do this. So notice here it is talking about finding when does the series converge absolutely. So what we're going to look at for this is we're going to take, this is a little bit weird, we're going to go as n approaches infinity, the absolute value of the ratio test. We're going to do the ratio test of this with an absolute value. Now, if I'm taking the absolute value, I can kind of ignore this part here, this negative one, because the alternating part isn't going to mean anything, right? Well, I could still pl plug it in there, but it's not going to mean anything with the absolute value. It's just going to be gone. So I'm just going to leave the rest of it there. N and X. Oh, wait. Hold on. Let's clean this up here. Sorry. You might need to write smaller. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. All right, so instead of an n, I'm going to put an n plus 1. Because remember, you do the n plus 1 first for the ratio test. So n plus 1. And then the x is just x. So it's x plus 4. But the n becomes an n plus 1. So notice I'm writing pretty small here. 
all over 6 raised to the n plus 1. And then I multiply this by the reciprocal of the original. So I'm going to now say 6 to the n on top. And on bottom, I've, I'm ignoring the negative 1 because of the absolute value. And then it's n times x plus 4 raised to the n. Close my absolute value. And now I'm going to say that that has to be less than 1. So remember the ratio test? In order for this to converge, it's got to be less than 1. So what I'm saying is that the absolute value of this is going to be less than 1. Okay, so this is these are the trickiest problems on here to be able to figure this out. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and show you the steps for solving this. I'm going to break up everything. I'm going to put things with n's over here and stuff with out over n's in another fraction. So I still have this. So uh, let's see here. Okay, so I've got this whole thing. Absolute value still has to be less than 1. I'm bleeding over to the other problem. All right, so I've just broken all of this up uh, using some of the strategy we used in our last lesson. Uh, make sure I did that right. 6 to the n, 6. The n is there. X plus 4. Okay, so now what can cancel out here? I've got 6 to the n's are going to be gone. Um, X plus 4 to the nth is going to be gone. And then I think that's it. Okay, so now let's come down to the next spot here. I've got the limit is n approaches infinity, absolute value of. So I have still have my n plus 1 all over. Instead of 6n, I'm just going to say n times, and I'm going to bring that 6 over to this fraction. So then I have times x plus 4 over 6, absolute value, less than 1. All right, so what's nice about this is that you can see here that this, as you approach infinity, this thing is just going to become the number 1. So as n approaches infinity, this is 1. And all you're left with is the absolute value of x plus 4 over 6. So I have x absolute value of x plus 4 over 6 is less than 1. And now we'll go back to an Algebra 1 topic, which is how do you solve absolute value inequalities? You say negative 1 is less than x plus 4 over 6, which is less than 1. Uh, okay, so multiply both sides by 6. All three sides, I should say. That gives you this. Subtract the 4, you get negative 10 is less than x, which is less than 2. All right, so this is the... Uh, the interval between negative 10 and 2 in which you would have this series converge absolutely. All right, so that was the trick to this first problem. Now, they might ask you a question on where does it converge conditionally. I'm going to show you how you would do that on number 5. So first on number 5, let's figure out, just like we did on number 4, where does it converge absolutely? And then I'll show you how you would figure out what about conditionally. All right, so let's start this off again. We're going to do limited as n approaches infinity of absolute value of... And then I'm going to say x minus 1 raised to the n plus 1 all over n plus 1 times, and now you multiply by the reciprocal of the original, raised to the n, and then again that has to be less than 1. I think this one's fairly easy to clean up and simplify. The only thing that's going to cancel is one of these x minus 1s is going to cancel. So I'm going to have an x minus 1. The nth power 1 is gone because it cancels with that one. And then... Uh, all over, I'll just say 1, times n over n plus 1. Okay, yeah, that's the same thing. It is less than 1. Uh, okay, so now this thing is approaching 1 as we approach infinity. So all I have left is the absolute value of x minus 1 it has to be less than 1. And then you solve that one. Negative 1 is less than x minus 1, which is less than 1. Add 1 to all three sides and you get 0 is less than x, which is less than 2. So if it was asking just where does it converge absolutely, then this would be the answer, it's between 0 and 2. If it asks the question, where does it uh, converge conditionally? So I'm going to write that as a question mark here. Conditionally, question mark, sloppy, sorry. So where does it converge conditionally? That's where we're going to check the endpoints, 0 and 2. So if you take a 0 and 2 and plug it in to the original, so let me show you what I'm talking about here. Let's plug in a 0 here. If I plug into this series from n equals 1 to infinity, plug a 0 into the x, then that leaves me with negative 1 raised to the n over n. So does that series converge or diverge? This is an alternating harmonic series. We've practiced this one before. It converges. So if this one converges, but the absolute value here, we know at zero, it, it's not, at, at the absolute convergence, 
at zero is does not have absolute convergence because we know it's between zero and two. So at that point, at zero, it does converge, which means it converges conditionally. So if it was a multiple choice, we'd have to know that it converges conditionally at, I should write that down here, at x equals zero. It converges conditionally. Now let's check the number two. If you go in here and you go from n equals one to infinity and say, what about if x equals two? Plug in a two there. Two minus one is one. So we have one to the nth power. Well, that's just a one. So one over n. So what's one over n? That is a harmonic and that diverges. So this is not a conditional convergence at x equals two. X equals zero was the only conditional convergence. So you will see some like that in your practice. So I know that's a bit confusing. That's about as hard as it gets on these. Okay, so, but hopefully this whole lesson is gonna really help you review and getting ready for a test. Cause you're gonna review all the different tests that we've been doing throughout unit 10. All right, this is Mr. Bean signing off. Rock that mastery check and I will see you back in the next lesson.